You know, the great J. Paul Getty, the billionaire, was one of the best negotiators in global business history. Somebody asked him one time, Mr. Getty, what have we got to do to be as successful as possible in our lives? He said, well, success is really very simple. You've only got to do three things. He said, rise early, work hard, strike oil. <laughs> you know, that's a pretty good formula, isn't it? Now, some of you EORs out there saying right now, well, Don, that's fine and good, but I'm not in the oil business. No, but you know what? We've all got some potential oil patches out there where we can, in effect, strike our own oil by being really, really good at something that matters, and I think negotiation fits into that category. How many of you would agree that most people don't like to negotiate? Most people hate to negotiate. In fact, most people... Even people who say they like it, all of us probably have at least a little bit of a disease that prior to this morning you probably didn't even know you might have had a little bit of. Now, I hate to be the bearer of bad news, but I'm going to tell you about the disease, and most of us have it. It's called negotiophobia. <laughs> and in business today, we can ill afford to have negotiophobia. The good news is there's a solution to it, to how we deal with it. Well, first of all, what is negotiophobia? Negotiophobia is a fear of negotiating based on limited experience, discomfort with uncertainty, and a lack of skill. Anytime we go into a negotiation with reluctance or without preparation, we're going to probably have a little negotiophobia come into play. And by the way, what is a negotiation anyway? A negotiation is the often ongoing process through which two or more parties whose positions are not consistent work in an effort to reach an agreement. That's a negotiation. Now, let me give you a couple of models and a little history on this. We've got the one-minute negotiator coming out in August, which we're really excited about. And it's based on the idea that there are four negotiation styles. And it is incumbent upon us to know all four and be competent in terms of the four skill sets of how to do each. And this is a new concept. It's a new twist for negotiation training because most people have one method. If they teach negotiations at all, they teach one method. And most of it is competitive, hardline negotiation. The pie is finite in size. Every dollar you get, you're taken away from them. And you've heard about the hardline approach, right? Sometimes there's a place for competitive negotiations. Then there's another style called collaboration, and that's what the Harvard Business School teaches in their negotiation practices classes. It's always win-win. Try to create a win-win, lasting relationship. You know what? I like collaboration. I like win-win. That's where I like to go if they're going with me. Let me show you our grid. It's based on the idea that there are two axes on the grid. The vertical axis is what we call activation, and the horizontal axis is what we call cooperation. And the net effect of that is you've got four negotiation styles. So take a look at the screen. We've got proactive at the top and reactive at the bottom. So that vertical line is the activation line. Then the horizontal line is the cooperation line with low cooperation over here, high cooperation over on the right. The net effect of that is there are four types of strategies in negotiating. One is avoidance. I was going to put off talking about it, but I guess I've got to go ahead and tell you about it. <laughs> avoidance, these are the people who've got the most severe case of negotiophobia. They just don't want to go there. They see it as unpleasant. They don't feel comfortable in the negotiations arena. They don't have the skill sets to carry them through it, through it successfully, and they avoid at all costs. Look where they are on the axes. They are reactive, and they are low cooperation. So they're kind of hanging back. Avoidance. Accommodation, lower right, these are people who are reactive but highly cooperative. That means that they're going to be of a spirit to give something up. They're accommodating. Now, if you're going to accommodate, I say go there reservedly, go there with full knowledge, and get something in return if and when you do accommodate. All right, look at upper left. This is the competition. This is what most negotiation trainers teach. Here's how you get every dollar you can get. But you see, that's really not a relationship-building sort of thing, is it? But competition is low cooperation but proactive. They're going to try to beat you up if they can for every dollar of your margin they can steal. 
And then we've got collaboration upper right. That's the desire, I think, in a perfect world. If we want to move people up that loyalty ladder, let's be adaptable enough that we can go to where we need to be on this negotiations matrix right here. Now, what is behavioral adaptability? Well, if we're me-oriented, these are people who are preoccupied with their own agenda. And maybe this is somebody who's going to be a competitive negotiator. They got their blinders on, and they're not going to move around much. They're tough. But if they're tough, and if you got a lot on the line in trying to negotiate with them, go to competition with them and let them see your strength in your own competitive process. And when you do that so often, they'll lighten up and say, you know, maybe it's time for us to collaborate if they really want to do business with you.